वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर रुचि गुप्ता एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर आई टी डिपार्टमेंट सो इन अवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द सॉफ्टवेयर रिक्वायरमेंट स्पेसिफिकेशन सो अंडर दिस वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड रिक्वायरमेंट इंजीनियरिंग स्टेप्स लाइक रिक्वायरमेंट एलिसिटेशन दैन रिक्वायरमेंट एनालिसिस रिक्वायरमेंट रिव्यू नाउ वी हैव टू डिस्कस अबाउट द रिक्वायरमेंट documentation so with the help of this documentation we will prepare a document uh, and that document is called srs so what is requirement documentation this is the way of representing the requirement in a consistency format consistent format and this is srs this is called srs and basically it is written by the customer it is written by the customer and it is written by developer it is both written for the customer as well as for developer and we can say it is a contract or a legal agreement between customer and developer so need for a srs uh, the problem is that the client usually does not understand the requirement or the software development process and developer often does not understand the client's problem and uh, specification of the uh, developer so there will there can be a communication gap between the uh, customer and the developer so the basic purpose of srs or preparing this srs srs is to bring the bridge the communication gap so as when we have to prepare the srs then some points we have to kept in mind srs is the medium through which the client and user needs are accurately specified to the developer srs it provide a reference for the validation of the final product as i have already discussed it correctly define all the requirement it never describe any designing details or any technical jargons never defined in the srs it does not impose any additional constraints so uh, these are various benefits for preparing the srs number one is the feedback it provide the feedback to the customer so at the very initial phase customer can uh, analyze the that what the software will do after implementation secondly it decompose the problem into the components it organize the information and divide the whole problem into the various components in a sequential manner finally the valid uh, next is the validation it use some validation strategies that apply to the requirement to acknowledge the requirement stated properly finally input of the design it it gives input for the design phase it is a input for the design phase so we can say that srs is the input for the designing it is an legal agreement between user and organization i have already discussed it reduce the whole development cost of the um, software because if srs is correct so the whole project may be developed in a efficient manner and we can also estimate the cost and schedule as per the uh, requirement so once we have to take the requirement from the user uh, developer have a rough estimation of the total cost and schedule of the project they give a rough estimate or rough idea about the total cost and total time for the project these are some characteristics of the srs srs should be correct it is correct when all the requirements are stated in a requirement document it should be unambiguous means srs is unambiguous it means uh, each and every requirements have only has only one interpretation means there will be no contradiction between the requirements third one uh, srs should be complete so srs is complete when requirements is clearly defined that what is soft what software is required to do next it should be verifiable means srs is verifiable when the specified requirements can be verified with some cost effect manner so the requirements are verified with the help of reviews it ranked an uh, important stability stability means that all the requirements are not uh, equally important some requirements are uh, uh, important some are uh, 
we have to put some requirements on priority basis. So, each requirement identify to make difference among other requirements. Next, it should be modifiable. The requirements of the user can change accordingly. Hence, requirement document should be created in a manner where changes can be modified early. So, that maintenance, maintaining the structure and style of the SRS. SRS should be traceable when source of each requirement is clear and it facilitate the reference of each requirement in the future. So, we can easily trace on the basis of requirement if they are justifiable. Now, consistency, SRS is consistent when the subset of individual requirement does not conflict with each other. Means we can say that requirements never conflict with each other. This is the IEEE standard for preparing the SRS. Uh, this is uh, the first is the, there are three section of this uh, IEEE standard for preparing the SRS. First two sections are same, the specific trailing occurs in section 3. So, this is our section 1, 1.1 uh, 1 .1 purpose of the uh, software scope. We will take definition, uh, uh, abbreviation, then we will take uh, references, overview of the project. Then in the second part, we have to give the overall description about the project. So, it is under a product pers perspective, we will define the system interface. Interface, we also define hardware interface, software interface and communication interface. We also give the information about the memory interface, operation and side adaption requirements. Then we will discuss about the product feature, user characteristics that how many users are involved in this project, constant assumption for the dependency and appointing for the requirements. Now we will come on the specific requirement, third section. So, in this we will define the external interface, functions, performance requirement, database requirement, design constraint, system attribute, organization of the statement and additional comments. So, this is the IEEE standard for preparing the SRS and it is a document, it is a legal document that is to be signed by the user as well as by the developer of the company. There is a check uh, points for the document. It should be complete and consistent, conformance to the standard, requirements never conflict, no technical error, discuss here and no ambiguous requirement should be there. This is the requirement validation process. So, once we have to prepare the SRS, then before uh, uh, hand over it to the customer, First of all, one team, uh, analyzer team will verify this, will review this uh, SRS and after that they have to give it to the customer, given to the customer. So, this is the validation process. Uh, SRS document is to be prepared. It should be prepared with some organizational standard, some organizational knowledge with there. Uh, uh, some set of users will prepare a list of problems. And uh, after that, they have reviewed these uh, uh, SRS, this SRS and some approved action may be taken out. So, this is a complete process about this uh, SRS plan review. Then distribute the SRS document to the team members. Then read the document. Organize this review. So, the whole team will uh, read this document. And each and every user will uh, analyze and uh, prepare a list of errors if it is under uh, SRS. Then all persons will follow up these actions and revise this document again. So, this process will be iterated until we have to completely verify the SRS. So, some requirement review or verification process. Uh, problem actions are uh, requirement clarification is uh, also 
is the part of uh, verification process we have to consider some uh, we also check some missing information under this if some requirements are conflict so we have to uh, remove these uh, requirement if some unrealistic unreal requirements are come then we can also uh, define or we have to remove these unrealistic requirements and add new realistic requirements in the SRS. Some security issues are to be also considered in this SRS. So, th this is the complete overview about the SRS and now we can create the SRS, we can review the SRS and also we have to verify this SRS. So, it is a part the complete uh, SRS is the outcome of this structured analysis phase. So, as we have uh, discussed all these things about the SRS and uh, uh, which is the part of first phase of SDLC that is software uh, analysis phase. So, in this uh, th phase we also use a structured analysis process. So, it is a technique to help define what the system need to do, a processing requirement, what data the system needs to store that is data requirement and what input and output are needed and how the functions work together. And uh, for this we have to prepare the data flow diagram. So, I have already discussed this data flow diagram in detail uh, like context level DFD, one level DFD and 0 level DFD and 2 level DFD. So, I have already discussed all these DFD in detail. I have already discussed the ER diagram which is a part of structured analysis. Uh, this focus on identity types things, entities which the system needs to store the information and it specify the relationship among the entities and it is used for lot of designing of lot of databases. So, uh, now we discuss the structured analysis process. So, structured analysis is a technique to help define uh, a processing requirement and uh, it discuss about the data that the system needs to store and use that is a data requirement and uh, the third one is what input and outputs which are needed for the requirements and how the functions work together to accomplish the task. So, key graphical model used for the structure analysis is data flow diagram. As we have already discussed the data flow diagram in detail like basically a different type of DFD we have to generate. One is a zero level DFD that is called a context level diagram. Then uh, one level DFD, two level DFD. So, basically uh, this uh, DFD show the input process output process, storage and how the functions are work together. So, we have to define all these uh, terms in the DFD and the based on these activities or process and data that flow in and out of the form. So, uh, we have discussed all these DFD in detail. Second uh, uh, key graphical model of structured analysis is the ER diagram which is already described in my previous in this uh, lecture. So, ER diagram it focus on the identity identifying types of things uh, entities which the system needs to store the information. For example, uh, customer information, item details etcetera, student information, phone number, address etcetera. So, it specify the relationship between these things or entities and it use a lot of design of the database. So, we can uh, design the database with the help of these ER diagram and this is one of the important uh, thing on the structured analysis. So, uh, we may crave up our business applications into the entities you will store about your data and this is a complete uh, structured analysis model as I have seen in this figure. Uh, this is a data dictionary part that contain the information about the uh, data flow diagram. So, the process and the flow of information which we have defined in this uh, uh, 
data flow diagram so all the data items which uh, are to be stored in the data dictionary so this is our data dictionary and these are the state transition diagrams this is the er diagram that is basically show the relationship between the entities and their objects and this is our data flow diagram that is used for the use for storing the information or for uh, flow of information from, from one process to another process then uh, we have to take the process specification it process specification control in specification and data object description so basically these three things uh, process specification show the process of information so once we have to collect the requirement from the user and when we have to scrutinize this requirement or when we have to uh, validate these requirements then we have to show the process that which information is correct which information is incorrect or which requirement is clear or which requirement is unclear so for that purpose we have to apply this process specification that come under the data flow diagram and we also check this control about this uh, requirement and under this we have to generate the state transition diagram for the given problem and similarly here when we have to show the data object description so here we have to create the entity relationship diagram of the program uh, of the project and when we have to combine all these uh, diagrams like er diagram data flow diagram state transition diagram so with the when we have to combine all these things so it become an structured analysis model so after uh, preparing all these things after creating all these uh, graphical representation of methods or all these uh, uh, diagrams we have to finally scrutinize the requirement we have to verify the requirement and after that we have to create a document and that document is called uh, srs which uh, we have already covered that how we can prepare the srs and uh, there is a standard for preparing the srs that is called ieee standard and once we have to prepare this uh, uh, ieee standard srs document then we have to review this document as well as we have to verify this document with the help of review and verification process and this uh, verification process this srs when verification process is a manual process because uh, no automated tool we have used in this process because all the tools are to be used in the design phase or the coding or testing phase but in this srs in the first phase of sglc we have done verification manually so a team of members will analyze this srs document and after that they have uh, review this process and uh, finally they have to validate that srs and after validation that document is given to the customer then customer will verify this srs if there is some uh, modification is required by the customer then the customer will uh, again uh, give it to the developer then developers again modify and follow some actions and they have again uh, revised this document again uh, revise that document and it will give to the customer and finally they have uh, send it to the customer and this srs will become an input for the next phase of uh, output for the next phase of sglc that is designing so now in the designing phase we will go and on the actual implementation of the software so this is all about our uh, software uh, requirement specification and analysis phase in my next lecture i will discuss about the designing so thank you very much